Welcome back to another video guys. Today I want to go over the Codex of Power and cover the aspects that are usable by all classes. In my last video we went over the class specific aspects and now I kind of want to cover the ones that are available to everybody and kind of discuss some of the synergies between these and the class specific ones. These aspects are broken down into five categories. You've got offensive, defensive, mobility, utility, and resource. Another thing that we're gonna cover at the end of the video is which type of aspects can be applied to which gear slots. You can't necessarily just take any one of these and apply it to any piece of gear. I've also got a chart that I'll share with you at the end that can show you where each one can be applied so that you can plan out your character. And I do want to note, that this is completely based on my opinion. These have definitely not been tested enough for us to be absolutely sure about everything, but I did wanna kind of rank things just based on how I see them on paper and how good that I think they'll perform in game. Hopefully this helps you plan out your character before we get into the game. Let's go ahead and get started with the offensive aspects. Alrighty, so to get started here, I have lined up each one of these aspects by their category, and I've ranked them based on what power I think they'll have. It's really important to note though that some of these are much better for specific classes, and so this is kind of more of just a general ranking of each one of the aspects, and so if there's one of them that's a little lower but it happens to work out really well with your build, then that's probably gonna be the one you wanna go with. This is just kind of a general power ranking. So to get started, I do believe that the best offensive aspect that is available to all classes through the Codex of Power is gonna be Edge Master's aspect. This causes our skills to deal up to 24% increased damage based on how much of our resource we have. So if you are at 100% resource, you're gonna get the full benefit of the 24% additional damage. What I really like about this one is that it works for all classes. All classes have resource, you build it up, you spend it, but it also works even when you're not at full resource. So even if you're spamming your skills, you're still going to gain some kind of benefit from it. I'm assuming that the way it works is that if you were at, let's say, half of your resource when you cast your spell, I would imagine that you're getting 12% increased damage. Now, I haven't seen anything to absolutely confirm that that's true, but it kind of seems to make sense with the way that the item is designed. However, what I really like about this one is that it also seems to have synergies with some of the class-specific aspects. One example of this is the Elementalist aspect for the Sorcerer. Core and Mastery skills cast at or above 100 mana, gain 20% crit hit chance. Now, by combining these two aspects, you're getting a pretty large increase to your damage, and on top of that, a much higher chance to crit. And so this definitely seems to not only work for classes, but also tie in pretty well with some other aspects. And for that reason, if you are not sure which aspects you wanna go with out of the Codex of Power, if you're kind of having a hard time picking, I would say that just about for any build, I do think that this would be a pretty safe choice. Moving on to my number two choice for offensive aspects, I'm gonna go with Rapid Aspect. Basic skills gain 23% attack speed. Now this is really good for some classes, however, the reason I don't rank this at number one is that it's not really perfect for everybody. Let's take a Rogue for example. Rogues just gain energy back. They're not really relying on using basic skills to gain their resource. Basic skills are just kind of something that you're throwing in either to cause enemies to be vulnerable or just because you're low on energy. Similar to the rogue, I don't think that the sorcerer would benefit in a huge way from having this, at least not most builds, because again, they are gaining their resource naturally and they're not really relying on casting basic skills to gain mana back. However, this is really solid for classes like Barbarian and Druid who are really reliable on using basic skills to get their resource up. Especially in the early levels, the Druid is spamming so many basic skills just to try to get their resource up so that they can cast core spells. For them, especially in the early game, I think that this is just about essential. So if you are playing a Druid, I would highly recommend going for this. Even if you're playing a Barbarian, I would venture to say that it is a very strong choice. I also think that this is a pretty good choice for the Necromancer. However, they do seem to have a few more ways to gain essence back without entirely being reliant on primary skills. But ultimately, any class that is relying on their basic skills to gain resource would absolutely benefit from this in a pretty big way. And for number three, I went with Aspect of the Expectant. This has a very good synergy with the Rapid Aspect. This is going to make it where enemies hit with basic skills, increase the damage of your next core skill by 5%, up to 50%. I think that the synergy between these two is pretty blatant, 
faster primary skills means more damage for your next core attack. I honestly don't have too much more to say about this one. It works in a pretty simple way, and I really do like the synergy that it happens to have with the rapid aspect. Moving on to number four, aspect of retribution. Now this is where I think that the offensive aspects kind of drop off a little bit. So distant enemies have a 15% chance to be stunned for two seconds when they hit you. On top of that, you're dealing 30% increased additional damage to stunned targets. I don't really think that the first part of this is super great. It's not bad because it's also kind of a defensive aspect in a way by locking down enemies that are at a range, but I think this is going to be much better for a class that is reliably stunning their targets. You don't want to rely on that 15% chance to stun enemies and then rush to them and try to do as much damage as you can in the next two seconds. You really want to have some kind of stun made into your build to take advantage of this. And on top of that, one thing that I'm not really huge on is that this is only active when you've got a cooldown that's going to cause a stun. So this is only going to be up a relatively small amount of the time compared to something like the Edge Master's Aspect, which is always giving you additional damage on your skills. So for that reason, I have to rank it at number four, but moving on to number five, Aspect of Intercom, deal 3% increased damage for each second you stand still up to 30%. If I'm being completely honest about this one, I think that it incentivizes you to play the game in a suboptimal way. I could see this being okay for someone like a necromancer who's hiding behind an army of pets so that they're able to stand still for that long, but even then to really benefit from the full effect, you have to stand still for 10 seconds. There's not really many fights or many opportunities where you're just going to be standing there for 10 seconds. And even though you're getting some amount of the effect, even after just standing there for one second, you're at least getting a 3% increased damage bonus. I don't see you standing in place long enough to really make this so advantageous that you would take it over something else. I will say that this also seems halfway decent for an incinerate sorcerer when you're just standing in place and channeling your beam. Granted, if I think about Diablo 3, for example, and I think about the wizard using a channeling skill, they're typically not really standing in place for that long. You're still moving around all the time. And so there are certain builds that it's better for, but ultimately I think that there should always be better options for you. Granted, this is purely speculation. And so who knows, maybe I'm wrong. Go ahead and leave a comment down below if you've tried it out and let me know how it works out for you. And at number six, we've got the needle flare aspect. Now, I would rank this much higher if the Thorns Barbarian were still viable. I will say that I did try it during the Server Slam weekend and it, it did work, but it was clearly outclassed by other builds. And I'm not really sure how much Thorns damage is gonna be getting put into our builds. I was a huge fan of this aspect during the first beta when we had the Thorns Barbarian. This was phenomenal. It would take out entire packs of enemies just because you got hit once or twice. But now I'm really not sure if anybody is building up enough thorns to really take advantage of this. I hope that I'm wrong though, because I did really enjoy my time on the Thorns Barbarian during the open beta. And so if somebody is able to make this work in a big way, please let me know down below in the comments because I'd love to try it. All right, so moving on to the defensive skills, I think that the aspect of might has got to be the best option for just about every class. In all fairness, if you are playing a class that is not working in a basic skill every four seconds, this may not be a great choice for you, but 25% damage reduction for 4 seconds is definitely something that can be up 100% of the time if you're weaving in basic skills during your rotation. At least when compared with Diablo 3, damage reduction on your gear was generally the most valuable thing to your survivability. It gave you more than your armor, more than your resistances, and your vitality. Now, if you've ran into a tough situation and you keep getting killed, I would absolutely recommend trying to work this in on a piece of gear and see how it does for you. At least in terms of Diablo 3, 25% damage reduction that was added on top of your character was typically very noticeable. Next up, we've got the aspect of the protector. I was a huge fan of this during the open beta. We were able to get this because you just have to complete the lost archives and the fractured peaks. This was very noticeable as far as gaining additional survivability. Now it's absolutely worth noting that this may even outperform 
the aspect of might in certain builds, especially builds that take advantage of situations where you have not taken damage for some period of time. For example, there's generally certain skills or passive abilities that say if you have not taken damage in so many seconds, you gain this kind of buff. Definitely consider that if you've got something like that in your build. For number three, I'm going with Aspect of Disobedience. You gain 0.25% increased armor for four seconds when you deal any form of damage, stacking up to 25%. Now, 25% additional armor is pretty solid. The thing that I'm not huge on when it comes to this is that it does take some time to build up. Certain builds are definitely going to be attacking faster, which can take advantage of this a bit more but it only lasts for four seconds. And so when you're going in between one pack to the next, there's a really good chance that this is just gonna drop off and you're gonna have to start all over again. And so as good as this seems when you read it, definitely see how much time it's taking you to get from one pack to the next. And if the buff is just dropping off all the time, this may not be worth it for you. Granted, if you're playing a really mobile class and you're able to remain in combat for long periods of time, dragging one pack into another and you're good at chaining them together, I definitely think this could be taken advantage of. But I do think that this is absolutely going to require you to play the game really optimally and make sure that you're constantly staying in combat so that you can take advantage of this. If you're kind of just moving at a casual pace, I would definitely recommend going with something else. And lastly, I do have to note when it comes to this last one, the aspect of the deflecting barrier. This is definitely ranked higher if you are playing a build that uses barriers. Granted, when it just comes to general power, I do think that this one is at the bottom. I think it's outperformed by all of the other ones unless you've really got a build that's got a lot of barriers going, but there is a 20% chance to ignore incoming direct damage from distant enemies while you have a barrier active. I don't think that 20% is all that particularly impressive, and on top of that, this is only working for distant enemies. And so this is definitely a very situational aspect. You've got to have that barrier. There's a 20% chance and they've got to be distant. So you're just relying on so many different elements to really take advantage of this. Now, similar to some of the aspects that I had ranked a little lower in the offensive category, if you find a way to take advantage of this in a big way, let me know down below in the comments. All right, so next up, we've got the mobility aspects. There are only two of these. There are also only two utility and only one resource. So when we get down this low, it is a little harder to rank them because I'm just comparing one against another and trying to do my best to find out which one I think is gonna outperform the other, generally speaking. So let's start with mobility. I think that the Ghost Walker aspect in general is going to outperform the Wind Striker aspect. Granted, there are definitely builds that I do not think the Ghost Walker aspect is all that great in. Moving freely through enemies is kind of a big part of this. And so if you're playing a Whirlwind Barbarian, for example, you can just whirlwind through enemies and so you're not really going to get trapped in a corner and just pinned there and taken out for a class like the necromancer especially if you're not working blood mist into your build this could definitely be valuable gain unstoppable and get a little bit of movement speed i don't think 10 percent is all that much granted being able to move freely through the enemies and get yourself out of a situation where you're pinned could definitely come in handy. This also works great for classes like the Sorcerer. Let's say you're playing a little greedy, you're playing fast, you teleport right into a pack. Get that unstoppable up and then just move out while your teleport's on cooldown. I definitely think that this can save your life in a tough situation. Alrighty, and so for the Wind Striker aspect, I don't think that this is terrible necessarily, but 8% movement speed doesn't really seem like enough. When it comes to a legendary power, I want my character to get noticeably stronger. Just gaining 8% movement speed for one second after a critical strike just doesn't seem all that impressive. Of course, if you're getting a lot of critical strikes, it can go up to six seconds, but I don't think this is really adding a lot to your character. I would much rather take something that's just outright giving me more damage. Now in the end game, this could potentially have some value when it comes to speed farming builds, especially ones that are getting a lot of critical strikes. This could get you moving a little quicker from pack to pack, but I still, even in the end game, do think that it is going to be outclassed by other aspects. But if you try it out and it happens to really improve your character, once again, let me know down below. All right, so next up is the eluding aspect. Becoming injured, this means you've gone below 35% health while you're crowd controlled, grants you unstoppable for four seconds. This is on a 40 second internal cooldown. I really like this aspect. I would venture to say that outside of fighting a Shava, the only 
time that I ever died during the server slam or the open beta weekend was when I was stuck in a really long crowd control effect. These situations aren't particularly common, but I do think for people who are playing on hardcore especially, this will be a very important aspect to have on your character. It is possible during certain fights to get completely locked down and just stuck with nothing to do at all. On top of that, you get unstoppable for four seconds, which is pretty solid. If you really wanted to, this could also be paired with the Ghostwalker aspect so that when you become unstoppable that is procced automatically by going below 35% health, you can gain that movement speed and freely walk through the enemies to get to safety. Next up is the aspect of shared misery. Lucky hit, when you hit a crowd control enemy, there is up to a 30% chance for that crowd control effect to spread to another unaffected enemy. I'm really not sure about this one. I do wonder if in group play it may be valuable if there's some kind of class or build whose entire purpose is just to lock down enemies while everybody else kills them, but generally speaking I just don't see this one doing all that great. It kind of seems like some kind of offensive aspect in a sense, except it's not really adding damage. I do think it's just going to be outclassed by just about most of the offensive aspects, and so I'm not really going to give it a try unless somebody else happens to make it work in a big way. Alrighty, and for the resource aspect, we've only got one in the Codex of Power. It is the aspect of the Umbral. Restore one of your primary resource when you crowd control an enemy. I actually think this is pretty solid. One example of this that I think would do really well is as a sorcerer running in, you're using Frost Nova, there's already an ability that you can spec into with Frost Nova that's going to give you mana back for each enemy you hit. If you stack that on top of this, you're going to be able to gain a huge amount of mana back really quickly and crowd control enemies at the same time, preparing you for a huge burst setup. In general, there's just a lot of abilities in this game that can crowd control large areas of monsters really quickly, and I think that this can absolutely help to keep up our resource for just about any class that's using some form of crowd control that has an area of effect. I'm pretty excited to see what people do with this aspect because I definitely think it is going to be used by several classes. So one thing to really take note of is the resource aspect can only be applied to the ring, and so if you're going to use something like Aspect of the Umbral, be cautious because it's going to have to go on one of your ring slots and if you need those powers that are on your ring you may not be able to fit it in. These mobility aspects are also pretty limited only being able to go on the boots or the amulet and I would venture to say that when it comes to the amulet most people are probably going to be using their offensive aspect here due to the 50% increase that we get to that aspect. Especially when we look at the mobility effects that we get out of the Codex of Power, I highly doubt that either of these two are worth gaining that 50% bonus on. I definitely think there are better options in the offensive tree for any build. I will go ahead and leave a link down below in the description to this document so that you can check it out and prepare yourself and kind of find out where you're going to be putting certain aspects to put your build together for Diablo 4. As always guys, I genuinely appreciate you for watching. Drop a comment down below. Let me know which aspects you're excited for in the Codex of Power. What synergies have you discovered and what are you planning on doing? And if you haven't seen it yet, check out my last video where we covered the class specific aspects and which ones that I think are going to perform the best while we're leveling our characters. Really appreciate you all for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.